True Sound Studios is in your ears. Okay guys, so it is finally drywall time. So I've already put up a couple sheets because I got a drywall lift and a drywall gun and I've just never used them before so I want to make sure I got to uh, to try those out first before I show you guys. So anyways, right before I put drywall in, I have to put up a vapor barrier because I am doing blown in insulation so that insulation won't have the paper like this. It's just all the pink stuff all kind of chopped up, I guess you would call it. Um, so that's what's up there. All that plastic you see is all on the ceiling. And you can see I put it everywhere, even wrapped around this beam because it technically is part of the ceiling. So I started putting up the drywall. You can see I got one sheet there. So right there, that's the first seam. And then I started my next board and that comes down over to here. And right there, that's my next seam. So now in order to do this the correct way, we're actually going to start a full sheet down here because that from right there to there, that's a little partial. That's pretty much a half sheet. So now I'll put a full sheet of drywall from there to here. And as you can see, now we have our first thing that I have to work around, which is my eight inch duct for that baffle box, which I have cut out right here. And in this particular situation, this is one of the few times where I got to put acoustic caulking on right now. So I'm going to put my acoustic caulking all the way around here and then up on the baffle box hose duct whatever i'm going to put some acoustic caulking on the back side of this vapor barrier the plastic to make sure i get a great seal between here and my drywall Just let, there you go that's actually underneath the plastic so kind of see it like this and then so we have a seal from the wood to the plastic and then from the plastic to the bottom of the drywall. So this is what it looks like now that it is all, the drywall's up here, it's been caulked. Now I haven't actually screwed everything in, I just put screws on the outside. But this is what it looks like and uh, if you're wondering what this bag is for, it's just to stop drywall dust and crap from getting up there until uh, I'm ready to turn on the heat. So what I'm using to hang all the drywall is, this is kind of like my assistant, this is called a drywall lift. You crank up this top platform, which uh, lifts your drywall up to the ceiling for you by using this crank here and it's got wheels on it and you move it around. And then this way you can just put your drywall, slide it over to here, lift it up into the ceiling and then screw it in. And this is how you can do it with one person or two people. Um, it definitely would be easier, especially since it's some pretty heavy stuff. Okay, so now that all the drywall is in on the ceiling in the control room, now we can start working on the walls and we're gonna work from the very top to the floor. So from top to bottom, we'll put the nice factory edge right against the ceiling and then that piece will come down and it'll end and then we got about a foot and a half uh, to be able to go from that piece to the very floor. Yes, you could just buy drywall that's big enough um, but since I'm hanging this all myself, a 4x8 sheet of 5H Fire X drywall is like 70, 80 pounds. And it's already heavy enough and there's 84 sheets. So um, I'm just doing 4x8 sheets just to make it a little easier on me. So if you are hanging it by yourself, um, I'm using a car lift jack that I kind of slightly modified um, so that it can help push the piece of drywall up to the ceiling and then hold it there for me because my drywall lift won't actually uh, be able to hold it there because it's really meant for ceiling or angled ceilings. Okay, so let me show you guys how I do this. Okay, so this is that jack I was talking about that I slightly modified. I just made this piece. It just has a hole drilled in it, fits over the piston on the bottle jack. And I got a piece of wood here that kind of cradles the piece of drywall in. And I just needed to uh, raise it up a couple inches. So I put these um, wood blocks at the bottom and then just clamp this in so just doesn't move. But anyways, um, I'm simply just going to put the piece of drywall right here and then I'll get the rod and you just kind of pump this up and just bring it all the way to the ceiling.
Okay, so I'm just gonna stop and take a quick break here. You can see the ceiling is done. Oh yeah, got that back wall behind me done. And then over here, this whole section is done. And now I am, now I'm starting on this area over here. Uh, cutting around this beam hasn't been actually too big of a deal. So I feel pretty productive considering in about a day I put up this much drywall. It really makes me feel like I've accomplished something. And then I have some help coming in later tonight, which is amazing because I really think I can hang the rest of the drywall in the control room and then go ahead and start on the live room, the vocal booth area. And then after that's done, that's only layer one, and all of these seams and joints, these I'm going to go ahead and acoustically caulk, and I'm actually going to put the drywall tape on them and just put one coat of mud on them, uh, just to kind of seal them up a little better. Now that's going to have to dry so that I will have to wait a little bit of time in order to put the second coat on, uh, or the, sorry, the second layer of drywall. Uh, mainly because that green glue has to go on. But I think, you know, after that full layer of drywall goes on, it'll be really nice and sealed up in here. And obviously I will update you guys uh, as I get further and further along. Okay, so it's another morning. Uh, just got out here in the studio and just checking on the heat. Um, it finally got hooked up yesterday. It's pumping out hot air, which is wonderful because it won't be 34 degrees in here anymore. Okay, so we're in the control room. Uh, this room is obviously bigger. Let's go ahead to the live room, the vocal booth. Now this has its entire first layer of drywall up. And you can just hear how crazy um, that the reverb in this room is. It's, it's probably closer to maybe one second, even maybe even more. So uh, do a clap test real quick because this room is what you would consider to be live. In some ways I wanna you know, preserve the sound of this because this would be nice to uh, record drums in, acoustic guitar, vocals, but at the same time, you know, I'm recording more of hip hop and pop vocals where you generally want a drier sounding room. But I want to be able to have that option to kind of make it a little more lively or make it a little more dead. And I'll show you guys that in a further video how I'm going to make like dual purpose. Um, acoustic panels that you can essentially just switch to change the sound. But before any of that happens, let's do the clap test and let's see how really reverby this room is. So right there, that is a prime reason why you would definitely want to have acoustic treatment in that room because right now that's just, not, it's just not manageable and it would not yield the type of recordings that I'm looking for. It's kind of cool to hear you know, a room of that size, which is fairly small, and it kind of having that sustained reverb time. I mean, that's it would be cool for a reverb room, but for a, a live performance space, um, for what I needed for that's just too too out of control. So as soon as I finish up caulking the rest of this It is time for drywall layer number two and that's where we're going to be using the green glue in between our layers of drywall Okay, so now that everything is caulked and or taped, that means this whole first layer is really well sealed. Now we can move on to layer number two, which is where we put the green glue on the back of the second sheet and then kind of mush it against the wall and then screw it in like normal drywall. So I got my green glue here. I bought four of them. And this is what it looks like after you take the lid off. This is the applicator. So this is the caulk gun, I guess you would call it. Um, that you like emerge into the green glue and you draw it up into this tube. And then that's the nozzle that screws on the front of it. And that's how you apply it to the drywall. 
So one five gallon bucket that I just showed you can fill up that caulk gun 22 times. Now you need two tubes um, on one four by eight sheet of drywall. So that means you can essentially do 11 four by eight sheets of drywall with one five gallon bucket. Uh, roughly took me about 42 sheets to do both the control room and the live room. So I'll have like just enough um, to cover everything. And one last thing before we get started, I set up a laser and this way I have a nice straight level line to start my first piece of drywall. It makes your life a lot easier if the first piece of drywall goes up is nice and level and square so that you know, as you keep going down the wall, you don't find all these, you know, weird angles and drywall gets cocked and then, you, you know, you have voids that you're gonna have to fill in somehow. And to start the second layer, that's actually a full sheet, a four by eight sheet of drywall there. To start, we're gonna start with a half sheet so that none of our seams ever line up. You never want your drywall to have two seams stacked on top of each other because that's just obviously a better way for the sound to escape through the drywall. Okay, so now that you guys have that information, it's time to start hanging some drywall. So I know this might be overkill, but to make sure that my seams, you know, whether it be a corner or where two pieces of drywall come together, after, you know, after you have to cut the drywall, I just want these, all these joints to just be as tight as possible. So I'm taking the little longer route by getting out a straight edge every time and make sure I cut it perfectly straight and make sure that, you know, if it's off by a quarter of an inch at the top or the bottom that I'm accounting for that. And all these details is really kind of, you know, add up to a better, more soundproof space because of the fact that, you know, if you had a maybe a quarter or a half inch gap on one of your corners, that is mass that is lost. And, you know, I don't care how you try to refill in that big gap, you're probably never gonna be able to do it unless you add the mass that the drywall has. So, you know, take a little extra time and make some really good cuts, make sure you measure everything and, me personally, I think it's worth it. You know, th these details add up to just even better soundproofing. Okay, so fast forward a couple days, the second layer of drywall is fully up in not only the control room, but also in here, the live room, the vocal booth. So I just wanted to really quick show you guys, um, now that the second layer is up, what I did with all the seams. So every seam has this acoustic caulking on it. So whether it's a 90 degree corner, um, kind of like a butt seam, I guess you would call it, or these tapered seams here, where the drywall is slightly tapered on either side, every single seam has been acoustically caulked. So just to be clear, that is every seam. So where one piece of drywall meets the next piece, whether it's the top, the sides, all that needs to be acoustically caulked. Now the reason we do this is because you don't want to have any air leaks. Air leaks means the sound can also leak through those small little cracks or voids, and that kind of you know hurts our soundproofing performance. So now that the first layer of drywall is up, the second layer of drywall went up with the green glue in between. And then also I acoustically caulked every single one of those seams. Now we can go ahead and just finish the drywall like you would do a normal room. And we can go ahead and tape and mud it and obviously do a little light sanding. And then our drywalling is done and I can go ahead and prime and paint the entire studio. Okay, so I'm gonna end this video a little differently. So the guy who's actually finishing all the drywall, so he's the one that is taping 
the drywall seams and then mudding over it and then doing the sanding. His name is TJ and TJ also plays guitar. In fact, he's been one of my clients for quite a while now. So I had him bring over his acoustic guitar and he's going to play some chords on his acoustic and then he's also going to do some picking on the acoustic. And we're going to do it in that live room, that vocal booth. So right now it's obviously totally untreated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the microphone about 10 inches away from his acoustic and we're going to record that with him just strumming and then also doing the picking. Then I'm going to take the microphone and move it about seven feet away and then I'm going to have him do the same thing again and you're going to be able to hear the difference from the much more direct signal with having the microphone really close and then having the microphone really far away and the reason I'm recording this is because obviously right now the room is totally untreated and then I'm going to go ahead and treat the room with some uh, inexpensive acoustic foam, some studio foam and then finally I'm going to acoustically treat the room um, you know with all the math that goes into it and the quadratic formulas and all the absorption and all that. So you're going to be able to see and hear the difference between the untreated room, the inexpensive studio foam, and then finally the professional acoustic treatment. Okay guys, so thanks for watching and check out this recording of the acoustic guitar in my totally untreated live room. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.